Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. My name is Wookie B. Bad, and this is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, I loved horror movies since I was a small kid. I was so scared to watch them. And as I grew up, it became like a, an accomplishment to be able to watch one and not freak out. So the movie today I want to talk about is The Reanimator. Not a lot of people know that this is a screenplay of a H.P. Lovecraft uh, serial uh, called Herbert West Reanimator. For those that don't know about H.P. Lovecraft, he's the creator of the Cthulhu Mythos. Some consider him to be the father of modern horror. He blended a lot of fantasy and sci-fi into his stories. Uh, there's a lot of drama with him, but considering he was born before the age of the, the change of the century, uh, he was born in 1890 and died in 1937 from cancer at 46. It wasn't until the 1970s that he started to gain any fame. And a lot of people do believe that he had hereditary mental issues, uh, which probably is some of the reason that people like to run their mouth about him. Excellent author. Uh, if you haven't read any of the stuff, I suggest check it out. Uh, but the film also stars uh, Jeffrey Combs as Herbert West. I know your work, Dr. Hill, quite well. Your theory on the location of the will and the brain is interesting. Though derivative of Dr. Gruber's research in the early 70s. So derivative, in fact, that in Europe it's considered plagiarized. If you watch this movie, you're going to be like, I know that guy. He had 10 different roles on Star Trek, and he did a bunch of voice acting. Uh, it was directed by Stuart Gordon. Stuart Gordon actually was having a discussion with his friends one night that there were too many Dracula films, and someone brought up the story from... H.P. Lovecraft, and there were no books in print. He had to go to the library and actually find it, and that, that's where this comes from. This is kind of a uh, double mad scientist, Frankenstein, twisty movie. There's a, plenty of people in here. Bruce Abbott plays Daniel Kane. He's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, Barbara Crampton, which is the scream queen in this movie, has been a scream queen in many horror movies. Uh, this has got a lot of people their start. Uh, this is actually considered to be a cult film. There are three of these movies. This was released in 1985. Uh, Bride of the Reanimator was in 1990, and Beyond Reanimator was in 2003. This is probably the best out of the three. David Gale plays Dr. Carl Hill. He was in a, a couple of horror movies and did multiple soap opera roles and probably would have done a lot more, but he died in 91 due to complications of surgery. A lot of the people, like I said, a lot of the people in here went on and did further things in the horror industry. Lots of them did soap operas. So this movie's all practical effects. And it's basically about one mad scientist being driven crazy as from his own project and another scientist trying to take his work do you agree that he's dead now do you agree that he's dead now uh doesn't work out for dr hill trying to steal herbert west stuff uh we do have a lot of gratuitous nudity in this movie so the clips are low this back when it released made about five hundred forty three thousand dollars on in its time in a the theater uh, which was pretty good money for 1985 and being a horror movie that wasn't Nightmare on Elm Street or Jason Voorhees. The music for this uh, is not your classic, like, creepy movie. It's kind of got, like, a little funk to it. Uh, I really liked it. I liked the hook. It wasn't creepy like Nightmare on Elm Street or Michael Myers or Friday the 13th. It has its own feeling to it. It's, it's a little happy compared to the rest. The special effects for this for 1985 were par. Uh, there wasn't anything groundbreaking. Uh, I think the story did a little more. It was, and it's got some depth to it as far as the insanity of the mind and being driven crazy by your own project. And the movie is also a little further on the sci-fi side than on the horror side at times. Killed him. No, I did not. I gave him life. Uh, there is gruesome gore in it. Uh, there is lots of nudity. A lot of the scenes are classic 80s horror movies. There's an axe scene. There's eye popping. There's 
severed heads. And overall, it's a good movie, a good starter movie if you're trying to get somebody into horror movies. Uh, some people will have a problem watching a movie from 1985. I do see how this could be held up to something like Evil Dead or Evil Dead 2 as far as being a campy, somewhat comedy. There's a couple of one-liners in it. Uh, it's definitely not as much comedy as Evil Dead 2. You'll never get credit for my discovery. Who's going to believe a talking head? Get a job in a sideshow. Overall, modern day standings, I would give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, if I was watching it in the theater in 1985, I'd probably think it was a 9. Uh, it does diminish with time because special effects have gone so much further. Uh, and horror movies have gotten so much creepier over the years. Like I said before, this would be a great starter movie. I think it would be good to get, you know, someone over the age of 18, because there is nudity in there, into horror movies. If they've never watched any or were too scared to watch it, this is probably much calmer compared to today's audience. But that's what I have. Wookie be bad. Make sure and give me a like and a follow. I'm also on Twitter under the same name. You have a good evening.